Hey everyone, and welcome to another Zim tutorial. Today I want to explain you what the steady aim feature does, and in which scenarios it is a good idea to use it. Steady aim is one of the three new Zim features that have been added with the latest firmware update. In my previous tutorial videos I already explained the other two new features named Boost and Simulate Analog Behavior. If you want to learn more about those two features, then you can watch my tutorial videos on them by clicking on the links in the video description. These three features heavily change the strength and behavior of the aim assist. Thanks to those it is now possible to break into or out of the aim assist bubble that covers a target very easily. The situations in which the aim assist pushes you away from the target can now be greatly reduced or even completely removed. Since boost, steady aim and simulate analog behavior will now play a big role when creating a game configuration, you can expect me to update most of my old game configuration tutorials. Also, if you would like to see tutorials on other topics, such as smoothing or how to reduce weapon recoil, then please let me know in the comments down below. A lot of work has gone into this new Zim firmware, so if you could share your experience with it in the Zim forum, or in the comments down below, then I would highly appreciate it. But let's start with the actual topic of this video. Just like in the Boost and Simulate Analog Behavior tutorial I will first explain what Steady Aim does. I will also show you some example pictures for a better comprehension. After that I will tell you about the advantages and disadvantages of this feature, and at the end of this video I will give you some tips and guidelines on what steady aim values work the best. So, let's start with a closer look at the new steady aim feature. To find this feature, start your Zim manager and connect it to your Zim. Once you have a connection, click on the options in the top right of your Zim manager. After that, click on the global settings button. In the following menu you can find the option to activate the expert mode. Tick the box next to it to activate it. The expert mode is necessary to get access to the steady aim feature. Once you have done that, you can press the save button in the bottom right and leave this menu. The steady aim feature can now be found in your game configurations. Click on the edit button in the top left of your Zim manager to enter the configuration mode of the Zim game profile that is currently running. The next step is to swipe one time to the right to enter the hip menu. Steady aim can be configured for both your hip and aim down sights configuration. It is up to you if you want to use the same values or completely different ones for each mode. The steady aim feature is part of the advanced sensitivity options, so press the button with the three dots below your hip or aim down sight sensitivity to expand these settings. You can now find the steady aim feature near the bottom of the advanced settings. If your Zim manager doesn't show you the steady aim option, then you have to update both your Zim firmware and your Zim manager to the latest version. In the Zim forum you can find the download links to those updates. Alternatively, you can use the link in the video description. It will directly forward you to the correct Zim forum topic. This topic also includes a step-by-step -step guide on how to update your Zim firmware or Zim manager. So, what exactly does the new Steady Aim feature actually do? The idea of Steady Aim is to make it easier to directly aim on the enemy in games that have an extremely strong aim assist. In these games, the aim assist bubble around the target can feel like a barrier, it is extremely hard to break through it with your crosshair. The same applies to when you already are inside the bubble but you want to leave it. An example for this is when you want to switch targets. The bubble acts like a very strong magnet that doesn't want to let go of your crosshair. The purpose of steady aim is to change exactly that, it will be much easier to enter or to leave the aim assist bubble. Of course steady aim can also be beneficial for games with a weaker aim assist. The algorithm of the steady aim feature does exactly two things. On the one hand it will quantize the angles of your aiming vectors. On the other hand it will quantize your crosshair movement speed. 
If you didn't fully understand this explanation then don't worry, it will be much easier to understand with the following example pictures. Let's start with the quantization of your aiming angles. Steady aim works similar to an angle snapping algorithm. Imagine the following situation. You are drawing a very large circle with your crosshair in a game. The speed with which you move your mouse is constant, with that I mean that you do not change the movement speed of your crosshair while drawing a circle. Without steady aim your in-game crosshair movement will look like the circle on this picture. It's a perfect circle without any flaws. If you now add a little bit of steady aim, your angles will be quantized to either 0 or 90 degree angles. So your in-game crosshair movements will either be horizontal or vertical. When you now draw the same circle again in the game, your in-game crosshair movement will look like the following. I kept the original circle in the background for a better comparison. The in-game movements are like a fine grid that has been placed over the circle, and your crosshair movements can only follow the grid lines. Every movement is either horizontal or vertical. If you now increase the steady aim value, you will reduce the resolution of the grid and it will get larger. Here is an example of the very same circle with medium steady aim. As you can see, the crosshair movement steps are now much larger and more noticeable. The movement resolution is less precise and it starts to get difficult to identify this as a circle. If you use the highest possible steady aim value, then the circle will look like the following. It is basically a perfect square, and there is nothing left from the original circular movement anymore. Obviously, it is not a good idea to use such a high steady aim value, but more about that later. Let's look at the quantization of your crosshair movement speed next. Think about the following example. You are moving your mouse in a perfect horizontal line from the left of your mouse pad to the right. Once in a while you increase or reduce the speed at which you move your mouse. Your in-game crosshair movement should then look like the following picture. The changing crosshair speeds are shown with different arrows. A longer arrow means you move the mouse faster, while a shorter arrow means you move it slower. For a better understanding, let's assign some movement speed values to those arrows. This is what I did in the following picture. As you can see, at the beginning you move the mouse with a speed of 10 on the mouse pad. Then you move it almost twice as fast with a speed of 17. After that you move the mouse two times with the same speed and so on. Since there is no quantization active right now, your in-game crosshair will move at the very same speed as your mouse on the mouse pad. Now we add a quantization of 8 to those mouse movement speeds. This means that there can only be crosshair movement speeds that are a multiple of 8. So any current movement speed will be transformed to 0, 8, 16, 24 and so on. Here you can see how the very same mouse movements would be translated into the game with a quantization of 8. You can regard the upper picture as your mouse movements and the lower picture as your in-game crosshair speed. Although you move the mouse with a speed of 10 on the mouse pad, your crosshair will only move with a speed of 8 in the game. Whenever an arrow doesn't match a multiple of 8, it will be rounded up or down to the closest multiple of 8. For example the next closest value for 17 is 16, so this movement speed will get slightly reduced. The speed of 24 will stay the same as it already is a multiple of 8. The same applies to the last mouse movement speed. To make this clearer, let's look at the same mouse movements with a quantization of 15. Here you can see how this would look like then. A quantization of 15 means that only crosshair speeds with a multiple of 15 are possible. Compare the example at the very top with the one at the bottom again. If you move your mouse with a speed of 10 on the mouse pad, the steady aim feature will transfer it into an in-game speed of 15. The two mouse movement speeds of 7 will not translate into any movement in-game. The reason is that the next closest possible value of 7 is 0 and not 15. For the last mouse movement speed of 8, this is different however, it's closer to 15 than to 0.
so its mouse movement speed will be changed into a crosshair speed of 15. As you can now see, the overall distance that you will move with your crosshair in the game will always stay roughly the same. In all of these three examples the combined length of the arrows is pretty much identical. The only thing that changes are the individual mouse movement speeds. Now that you have a better understanding of this feature, let's look at the benefits and disadvantages of steady aim. As I mentioned earlier already, the main advantage of steady aim is the option to customize how hard or easy it is to enter the aim assist bubble. For lots of games such as Call of Duty or Destiny this can be almost essential as the aim assist is several times stronger than in most other games. Switching between targets or doing flick shots can be extremely hard if not impossible in those games. But that is not the only advantage of steady aim. Another advantage is to favor the X and Y axis over any other angle. Most modern games have a high focus on horizontal aiming. You hardly have to aim in diagonals, and only very rarely you have to aim vertically. The map design and combat experience are mainly tailored around ground-level encounters, in which vertical crosshair adjustments can be narrowed down to enemies jumping around. Steady aim can be a great help in those games as it will make sure that your aim stays on either the X or Y axis. Unwanted angles are ignored or converted into horizontal and vertical movements. Next to that, the steady aim feature also irons out crosshair movement speed inconsistencies to allow for a smoother target tracking. This will also increase your visibility for your surroundings and boost your overall map awareness. The disadvantage of steady aim is that it can heavily reduce your overall aim accuracy. Instead of using your raw mouse inputs, which allow you to control your crosshair with the maximum possible accuracy, you basically filter your inputs with the steady aim algorithm to achieve a better aim assist behavior. The bottom line is that you trade a customizable amount of accuracy for aim assist. So for those of you who want the true PC experience with the best possible mouse accuracy I highly recommend you to not use steady aim. This also applies to games which have no aim assist and therefore a high focus on general aim accuracy. Rainbow Six Siege is such a game for example, it has no aim assist, requires a lot of accuracy and has lots of vertical combat scenarios. It is worth it to mention though that with the correct steady aim values you will not, or only slightly notice the steady aim effect. In the last few minutes I want to discuss exactly that, to give you an idea of what values work best with this feature. As you probably already noticed, the steady aim feature has a strength slider in the Zim Manager to customize its effect. The possible value range that you can use goes from 0 to 100. A value of 0 will deactivate the steady aim while 100 is the maximum strength that you can use. Now, when you add steady aim to your game configurations, the first thing you should do is to check which Zim synchronization you are using. The effect of steady aim is influenced by your Zim synchronization value. You can find your current Zim synchronization above the steady aim option in the advanced sensitivity settings. If you use synchronization off, then in most games you can use a steady aim value of up to 3 before you can notice any negative effects. That means any value from 0 to 3 will give you an aim assist benefit without any real disadvantages. When you use values of higher than 3 you will start to notice the vertical and horizontal movements when you do very slow diagonal movements. If you use synchronization default, then you can go with a steady aim value of up to 5. Synchronization default will reduce the effect of steady aim a little bit, therefore you are required to use a higher value than with synchronization off. The concept is the same however, with a value of 0 to 5 you will not notice the negative effects of steady aim in most games. For synchronization common you can use a steady aim value of up to 7. Synchronization common reduces the steady aim a little bit more than default, therefore a higher value is needed before you start to notice the quantization of your aim angles and crosshair movement speed. 
Synchronization slow reduces steady aim the most. Here you can go as high as steady aim 9 before you will start any negative effects. A value from 0 to 9 works best with this synchronization. Now as you probably noticed, those values are very low and nowhere near the maximum scale of 100. This is because the steady aim will basically reduce your aim accuracy to an unplayable level once you use values of more than 20. Depending on which synchronization you use, this can already be the case with a value of 10 or more. Therefore, if you want to use the steady aim feature without any noticeable drawbacks, then use the value ranges I mentioned before for each synchronization. If you are willing to sacrifice some aim accuracy to reduce the aim assist bubble even more, then you can of course use higher values as well. I recommend to not go above 10 or 20 though. Overall every game has a different game mechanic, therefore you need to customize this feature for every game individually. The steady aim value that works for one game might not do it for a different game. If you have any questions about the Zim, or about the steady aim feature, just ask in the comments down below. If you liked this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. Also, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below, and I will maybe see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your Zim experience.